Welcome to Radio Frequency Integrated Circuits class. This is uh, Unit 3, Lecture Number 3, and we are discussing passive impedance transformation. Uh, so in the last class, we looked at uh, the first matching network, which we called as L network, uh, by looking at the shape of that. And uh, we saw that that L network can be used, or L match can be used to uh, do either uh, impedance uh, upward impedance transformation or downward impedance transformation and we saw how the uh, how the impedance value is connected to the resistance connected in terms of q factor and we looked at a, a one example uh, where uh, impedance transformation has to happen from 50 to 25 at a center frequency of 5 giga and uh, we obtained the component values and we have uh, uh, tried the simulation of that and we almost measured the same thing what we have, uh, what we got with the component values. And also we saw impedance, uh, upward impedance transformation. Uh, so it is just by changing uh, the LC or uh, the LC in different ways, we can actually get uh, impedance transformation. So we can see four L section topologies here. Uh, when we connect L and C in different forms, uh, we'll get either upward impedance transformation or downward impedance transformation. Apart from this, we can work with uh, two C capacitors or two inductors also that also will give some uh, some kind of impedance transformation. And that is also uh, classified under uh, uh, L section only L section because of the shape of the topology. Right now. Uh, yeah, but one uh, when we discussed about L section, I stated that there is one drawback with this L section. The drawback is uh, if you look at this example, we'll understand that. Uh, so uh, when uh, when a transformation ratio is given, or if if it is asked to uh, transform from 50 to 50 ohms to 25 ohms, um, directly we are actually fixing the Q factor because Q factor is uh, approximately the uh, approximately under root of R P by R S. So because of this uh, this relation, uh, we cannot ac actually uh, go for a different Q factor if it is required. That is one thing. And second thing is. Uh, with respect to L match, we have two components, uh, which is one inductor and one capacitor. And since we have only two components, we have only two degrees of freedom. So when I say degrees of freedom, uh, like what all components you have to vary in order to uh, get the circuit uh, parameters or in order to fix the circuit um, parameters. Now, uh, if you look at this L match, we have actually three variables. One is the center frequency. Here it is given as 5 giga. Another one is impedance transformation ratio. Let me write it as TR, transformation ratio. That is 50 to 25, which is 2. And the third one is Q factor, right? Uh, so as I stated, uh, directly by giving RL from 50 to 25, we are fixing the Q factor. Transformation ratio itself is fixing the Q, Q factor. And uh, center frequency uh, is 5 giga. So now we, are, uh, we have only L and C, or L1 and C1 as per this numerical. And we saw that. Uh, when we choose the value of L1 and C1, the value of L1 and C1 should be selected in such a way that we the center frequency should be um, 5 giga and also the impedance transformation is 50 to 25, right? So we, we did not have uh, an option actually to vary or to look for a uh, different Q factor or Q factor is in turn connected with the impedance transformation ratio. Automatically, your impedance trans, uh, transform, transformation ratio is fixing the Q factor. Now, uh, yeah, so I am stating that uh, this L match it is having only two degrees of freedom. And our requirement, or we have actually a minimum three things to fix. One is center frequency, one is impedance transformation ratio, and another one is Q factor. That is first thing. And second thing is uh, impedance transformation ratio leads to or this actually fixes the Q factor. So uh, we cannot actually go for a, a higher mm, uh, for a different Q factor or uh, this L match. Uh, uh, the, there is a coupling between this Q factor and the transformation ratio in the case of an L match. So L match uh, couples the Q factor and transformation ratio because both are uh, connected. I, I hope you understand that when I say both are connected. Now, let us go to the next uh, matching network, uh, which is called as pi match. Again, from the, uh, the name has come from the uh, structure itself. So let me, uh, under the classification, I'll just make this as 
to one being the L match. So we call this as pi match. Uh, so as I stated, L match, uh, we have only two, uh, two degrees of freedom out of the three uh, things what we can specify. So the main intention of pi match or why we are going for pi match is actually to uh, get a, a third degree of freedom. Right. So how are we getting this third degree of freedom? That is basically by, let me, let me draw the pi match here. So uh, say this is the resistance which need uh, transformation, which need to be transformed. Let me call this as RL, right? So in, uh, in the case of L match, what we have done is we were actually connecting, uh, we were connecting a capacitor whose value is uh, C2 or C, it was C1 and then we were connecting an inductor. So we will continue the same thing. Uh, we'll add an inductor L, but we will have one more capacitor here and I call that capacitor as C1. And now whatever I have drawn in pink color is in the shape of pi. That is why this match is called as pi match, right? So uh, we are uh, interested in uh, finding the impedance looking from this side and that impedance uh, should either give a, a up transformation or either should give a down, a down transformation. So this is the uh, basic idea of a uh, pi match, right? Now let us understand how the spy match works or how, uh, like as I stated, uh, we have three degrees of freedom. So how this actually works, right? Uh, so uh, to understand this more, I will actually uh, draw this in a different form. So how I will draw this is, I have a single inductor here, but that single inductor I will split into two inductors, say one is L1 and another one is L2. So the circuit will look like this. The capacitor will remain same, which is C1. And the inductor L is divided into two uh, series inductors, L1 and L2. And this is capacitor C2. And this is the resistance which need to be transformed to a different value. I hope you are with me. So this is RL. <laughs> now, uh, okay, let me do one, uh, one small modification here. Mm, so whenever we have uh, a resistance which is in parallel or uh, in order to, uh, what to say? Uh, since we have written the formulas in terms of series and parallel resistance, uh, if you remember, we have written something like this. Yeah, we have written a uh, formula for RP and RS in terms of Q. So what I'll do here is, uh, since I have this RL as a parallel resistance, let me uh, indicate this as RP, because we will be doing a series to parallel transformation and to make it clear or to make it simple, the, the original load resistance which need transformation is actually kept or is renamed as RP. I hope that that should not um, affect any, uh, like any analysis, right? So this is RP. So what I have done is, Inductor is replaced by two inductors, L1 and L2. Now you can now we can see this uh, pi match. So this pi match can be actually observed as or viewed as two L matches. Now this can be observed as two L matches, which are connected in cascade. Two L matches connected in cascade. Right. So how will you see that? Uh, now this is, if I just break in this form, I can see one LC, which is L2 and C2, and another LC, which is L1 and C1, and these two are actually connected in cascade, right? But if you look at the previous slide where we have actually drawn the, yeah, so this is the, yeah, here we have listed the four L section topology. And uh, so when I look, look to this circuit, I can see that, uh, one LC, L2, C2 is in this form and another one is C1, L1 is in this form. So if I compare with this, uh, the L2, C2 is act uh, basically acting as a downward impedance transformation and uh, L1, C1 is actually acting as an upward impedance transformation. I hope you, you follow this, right? Because um, I have drawn a pi match and pi match is actually now divided into two L matches, two L matches in cascade. 
And if I closely observe this two L matches, one L match is acting as a downward impedance transformer, and another one is acting as an upward impedance transformer. Right. So uh, here you can see this part. This part is actually acting as sorry. This part is actually acting as a, a downward impedance transformation. And the here it is acting as upward impedance transformer, right? Okay, so uh, two L matches connected in cascade, uh, and I'll write here one transforms. So one L match transforms up, and other L match transforms down. Now you'll be wondering why uh, we need. Uh, one up and one down transformer, right? Yeah. So basically, uh, by viewing this pi match as two L match cascade, we are uh, we are trying to get uh, three degrees of freedom here. Or the, the splitting is basically for analysis and to uh, retain the same, uh, like just to compare with the L match. Now, what happens here is uh, initially the first thing is your RP. RP is a parallel resistance now. So because of this downward impedance transformer, RP is actually, RP is uh, first transformed down to a lower resistance. So this, since it is a downward impedance transformer, first it is actually transformed into a lower resistance. And then that resistance is transformed up to a uh, another value, which is R in. But that is that is uh, by the second L match, right? So by this process, we are actually gaining additional degree of freedom. Let us see how it's. Uh, so uh, if if I look if, if I look from this point, if I look from this point here, I have an RP, and then there is an LC. So RP is transformed into a lower resistance. Now, since this is not the final resistance, let me call the resistance seen from here as RI. So I'll call this RP transformed into RI, the lower resistance, I call it as RI. And I say this lower resistance is something called as an intermediate resistance, because this is not the final resistance value. This is an intermediate resistance, right? <clears throat> now, later, the next step is this RI is transformed up. This Ri is transformed up uh, to a value uh, which I call it as Rn because Rn is the resistance seen from here, which is the required uh, resistance value. And this is happening uh, by the second L match. Right, The first L match will be transforming to a lower value Ri. And the second L match will be transforming this Ri, the intermediate resistance, into Rn which is actually the required value, right? So here, what we got is we actually uh, got a third degree of freedom. So what is the third degree of freedom? Third degree of freedom is actually the inductance value L, but here we are treating it as two Ls, L1 and L2. Uh, this is the third degree of freedom, is basically L, right? <clears throat> or I can say uh, there are three, uh, yeah, third degree of freedom is L, so one is C1, another one is C2, and another one is sum of L1 plus L2. This helps. These are the uh, three degrees of freedom in order to uh, uh, fix the center frequency, Q factor, and impedance transformation ratio. Right. So if you look at this, uh, if you look at uh, this uh, circuit network by getting the third degree of freedom, uh, we will understand that. Uh, previously in L match, there was a coupling between the Q factor and the impedance transformation ratio, but that is now decoupled, or I can say, uh, basically this pi match, uh, pi match decouples the Q factor, the Q factor from uh, the impedance transformation ratio. Uh, how it is, how they are decoupling? That is basically by introducing an intermediate resistance Ri, introducing Ri. So this Ri is as a result of the first downward impedance transformation, right? So thereby, this leads to, this helps in uh, a higher Q factor, right? 
i hope this is clear if you have doubts you can ask now you can put it in the chat box right and one more uh, thing is we can independently specify now with this we can independently specify uh, sender frequency q factor and overall impedance transformation ratio uh okay all right and it is so uh, how how yeah let us see the analysis how it works but uh, how will you say that the q remains fixed here a uh, q is not fixed yeah go ahead when you took uh, for example like root over of rp by rs mm -hmm. um even in this case when we design the circuit for a particular value of l c1 and c2 yes yes uh, the value of q will still be fixed right okay now uh, the difference yeah i think nikhil is also asking the same thing how does decoupling concept work again so uh, exactly. yeah i think yeah your your question is also the same so in the previous case in the case of l match you can see if i look to the look at this question yeah in the case of l match uh, what decides your q factor the impedance transformation ratio because you have 50 you want to convert to 25 so here this rl by uh, yeah this should be rp by rs right because rl was the, the parallel resistance so here directly we are getting rp by rs but now in our case it is not because uh, if you look at this your rp is not directly related with the final r in your rp is related to ri are you getting rp so here uh, when i do this first transformation there is a relation coming between rp and ri so that basically decides the q factor of this side uh, for uh, like i'll explain how we to, how we will analyze this but uh, just i'm telling so your q factor is basically decided by this ri not the ratio of rp by rn okay okay let me let me do the analysis first let me bring the design equations here and then i'll come back uh, for your question anirudh and nikhil i hope that will uh, clarify you okay so let me uh, write the design equations here right so uh, uh, i'll i'll be doing this in uh, uh, two three steps okay please uh, follow the steps uh, carefully so the first thing is uh, i'll transform the okay let me draw the network once again so this is the initial uh, network we have uh, the rp resistance right so i'll write this as step 1 this is c1 l1 l2 c2 and rp so the step 1 is we'll transform the parallel rc so we can see there is a parallel rc here we'll transform this parallel rc transform the parallel rc uh, sub network to parallel rc can be converted into series as and we know the transformation or the conversion formula so when i do that uh, the new circuit will be like this so this uh, this is c1 and this is l1 this is l2 and now here we have a parallel rc that need to be replaced by a series rc so i'll introduce a capacitor which is a c2 capacitor but now in series and uh, we have a resistance which was previously uh, previously rp now it is a series resistance but i'll mark that resistance as ri because i told that the first transformation happening here is uh, to an intermediate resistance now still i'll uh, yeah i'll divide this into two right so what i have done here is i have transformed the parallel rc to a series rc and the resistance looking from here is r in now uh, if you look to the right hand side section of uh, what i have drawn here in red the right hand side section you can see actually a series rlc right uh, l component c component and, uh, and an r component which is actually a series rlc now 
uh, if i write the q factor if i write the uh, q factor or q of the right hand side section now i have two sections if i write the q of the right hand side section uh, let me call this as q right so what will be the q factor uh, i can write in terms of uh, l or either i can write in terms of uh, capacitance so let me write in terms of l which is omega not l2 divided by the resistance there is ri right or if i write uh, in terms of the resistance values previously it was rp and now it is ri uh, it will be equal to rp by ri if i write exactly it is rp by ri minus 1 right because we know that rp is equal to ri into q square plus 1 that was the previous relation so from that i am just writing for q in terms of rp and ri uh, any any doubt in this any doubt in the equations what i have written what i have written is actually towards the right side and now you can see uh, the the q factor the q factor of this right hand side section uh, is depending on rp and ri similarly like R, ri is another series resistance right since it is not the final resistance we are calling it as an intermediate resistance that's all right now if i look at the left hand side of this section if i look at uh, the left hand side so i have written the q of the right hand side now if i look at a left hand side of the section that section also see a resistance ri uh, at a center frequency right because uh, towards the right what you can see is a series rlc and at center frequency this l and c will cancel each other and what this uh, what exactly uh, this will see or uh, what exactly this left hand side section c is also a resistance ri right so in that case i can even write the q of the left hand side section left hand section as i will call this as q left that is equal to that also can be written as omega not l1 by ri but there so uh, this will be again this lc will be actually transformed right uh, so if i do that Uh, there the resistance will be actually equal to r in by r i i hope uh, this is clear so towards the left hand side again with this lc uh, when i do the transformation it will be again uh, again a series uh, rlc so i have uh, used the same uh, equations here the only difference is uh, the final uh, the, the parallel resistance will be r in there and the series resistance will be um, r i or basically i am converting again r i into r s series to parallel i hope this is also clear now uh, if if so what i have done is there was a circuit i i wrote the q of uh, both sections right uh, right hand side section and uh, left hand side section now if i look for the overall q factor of the circuit so the overall overall q factor of the circuit is overall q can be written as the sum of uh, the qs of both the section so uh, that will be equal to omega not into l1 plus l2 divided by ri that i have written from both q right and q left that is overall q that can also be written as the sum of r in by ri minus 1 plus rp by ri minus 1 right so this is q here let me take this a uh, full page yeah so uh, what i have done here is uh, first uh, yeah Uh, i transformed the parallel rc network into a series rc network and then i viewed the right hand side uh, written the q factor in terms of resistance as well as inductance q then i looked at the left hand sec section that also will give a q factor uh, in terms of the inductance l1 and in terms of the resistance series and parallel r uh, r in and ri then i have written the overall q factor now uh, now if i look at these equations i can see that uh, if q is uh, okay now if q and impedance transformation ratio if these two are given if these two are given then because uh, to find <coughs> if i want to find ri uh, say look at this equation look at the equation of q 
if i want to find r i the intermediate resistance i need to know what is the q factor and i also need to know what is the impedance transformation ratio basically that is r p by r n right so i can evaluate r i so r i can be evaluated if i uh, have uh, the value of q as well as the value of the impedance transformation ratio right now say for example i know the value of r i so now uh, if i have mm, r i known with that what i can do is i can actually find the value of the inductance what i need to use what is l1 plus l2 l1 plus l2 is basically r i into q divided by omega not right so if r i is known i can write l1 plus l2 is equal to r i into q divided by omega not now there are again uh, things which we need to evaluate uh, those are the capacitance values so let me write down the capacitance values also capacitance values uh, c1 so uh, those can be again written from the q factor i know the q factor of left and right so i can write c1 is uh, from q left q left divided by omega not uh, into r in the resistance there and c2 is actually coming from q right q right divided by omega not into rp rp is the initial resistance there right uh so <clears throat> what you can see here is uh, previously we had only two equations or uh, we had only two degrees of freedom now uh, you we can decide the q factor uh, by using this uh, third uh, third degree of freedom which is the inductance value right and now uh, if you look at the equation for q factor r i the intermediate resistance is can be obtained from the q factor value and also from the impedance transformation and with that we can proceed and we can find the component values l1 plus l2 c1 as well as c2 right and uh, from this equation so if i uh, deduct this equation uh, i'll get the value of r i approximately um, i can write r i as r in plus r p the whole square by q square it is only an approximate equation just to start for the calculations right so these are the design equations and uh, with this uh, we can get the component values and we can actually do impedance transformation uh, without uh, affecting or without uh, having any uh, yeah in this case your q factor actually there is there is a freedom actually to vary or change the q factor value i hope this is clear now i can take questions from anirudh and uh, uh, nikhil so is that clear how uh, it decouples with the help of this ri um uh, sir did you mean that uh, the left hand side and the right hand side have different q factors and that's why we get uh, flexibility okay so now uh, when we talk about different q factor for both sections yeah that we have to uh yeah definitely l1 and l2 values uh, will be same now it all depends on c1 and c2 values right so and c1 and c2 uh, will have actually different values in fact yes we will have different values yes correct uh sir so is is that the reason why you are saying that uh, the q factor is decoupled no why i am telling the q factor is decoupled is basically because of the relation which was exist uh, was existing before you can see that uh, the q factor relation was directly the ratio of rp by rs right this was for a single l section now we have two l sections like that so now this this uh, this relation is valid but uh the the components or the 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 resistance here are not directly the impedance transformation ratio rather the 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 values or the ratio here it depends on ri this is an intermediate resistance so by uh, viewing uh, or by considering an intermediate resistance or by considering it as two l matches and do two step transformation this is possible i would say okay sir got it okay, yeah yeah uh what we'll do is we'll take up uh, the example and uh, okay nikhil yeah so we'll take the same example and we will uh, of, we'll uh, do the simulation uh, part also uh now <clears throat> yeah so this is about pi match uh, so uh, let me uh, complete one more and then we will uh, go ahead and do the design part so the second one this is pi match now we can actually have a dual a dual for this pi match and that is called as uh 
T match. So since I mentioned it as dual, uh, I'll just draw the circuit. This is the dual. Right, so the pre, uh, instead of considering it as a one single parallel capacitance, we are considering it as two capacitors, C1 and C2, and this is L1 and L2. And this is the, uh, the load resistance, which is RL, what we consider initially, and this is R in. So this pi match can be considered as dual, sorry, this T match is can, can be considered as dual of pi match. And uh, yeah, so the single capacitance was actually uh, broken or we are considering single capacitance as two. And this result in the same similar kind of equations. Uh, I'll just write down the equations. You can do analysis further. So the Q factor can be written as omega naught Ri into uh, C1 plus C2. I'm writing the combined Q factor, which is equal to Ri by R in minus one plus Ri by Rl minus one. So I have written in terms of Rl only here. And uh, the C1 and C2 can be written as, yeah, from this equation it is Q by omega naught into Ri. And then I can write L1, L1 is again Q left into R in by Q. I'm using the same equations. I'm just uh, changing the variables, that's all. And L2 is equal to uh, Q right into Rs by omega naught. Right, so this is the dual of uh, pi match. And now we'll see uh, how these two uh, matches work, okay. All right, so any, any doubts in this? Uh, wouldn't it be square root of R in by R one? Uh, which and one second. So I'll be uh, I'll be winding up uh, today's session here. The next class we'll start with the examples on pi match and t match, and we'll see the simulations in cadence also. Right.